this is Kathleen from oldworldfarmhouse.com and today I'm going to show you how to get a Swedish Gustavian con Swedish country, Scandi country look with chocolate paint. So let's get started. Look, if you're not familiar with it, or the Gustavian style, what does that mean exactly? So King Gustav III of Sweden, he was king in like Seven, in the 1770s, kind of when we were having a revolution here. And he went over to France and visited Louis XVI over at Versailles, and he just fell in love with that French neoclassical style. And when he went back home, he wanted the same kind of furniture and the same kind of look. But he didn't have as much cash as the French, so he didn't gild everything the way they did. Um, they ended up using a lot of paint and in Sweden they used a lot of light color paint because it's so dark there for so much of the year that a lot of their interior decorating is, de is designed to catch as much light as possible. And um, so that was like a, how they refined that French neoclassical style, lighter colors and more paint and less gilding, um, some even cleaner and more pared back lines. And also, um, when it got out into, you know, wider circulation in Sweden, not these fancy um, fabrics as much as like a simple check. And so putting like a check homespun fabric, like my chairs, which is a little copy of Swedish style, um, something like this with um, a gilded or painted sort of elegant. It gives the Swedish country style or Gustavian style uh, this high low look, which really fits so well with how we like to decorate today where we, where we live. Um, so I had this old set, it was actually my great grandmother. The shape, if you can find furniture, old furniture that, you know, obviously this is really beat up. I do not want to refinish it. It's got all kinds of water stains and nicks and the veneer is chipping in spots, but the shape is great. It's got this neoclassical shape. Um, the, they would make the legs like this to imitate, you know, the Grecian columns, what the neoclassical style. The neoclassical style um, got started in France and then spread out was because they had discovered Pompeii and that other place in Italy. Um, buried under that volcanic ash and so the world just went people just went crazy and they wanted to imitate everything that they saw from furniture to fresco to just the, that look the the, the neo the classical look hence neoclassical style um today what i'm going to show you is duck egg blue um here look at this is the color it's a greeny blue exactly like a duck egg this would have been a very typical color that they would have used um, in the Gustavian period. And then I'm also going to be adding some highlights. With, this is Annie's Paris gray right here um, to this table, which is exactly how I did the chairs. Some, this is, these are all of Annie's colors and her other sort of Swedish colors would be Aubusson Blue right there, and Scandinavian pink, which is a great pink because it doesn't have any of that baby pink in it. It's a real earthy pink. Primer red. <coughs> no girly pink. <laughs> right. Arl, old ochre, and then of course, pure original or old white, maybe especially old white. A lot of Scandinavian furniture is simply painted white. And she also has this new color, which is close to duck egg, but it's bluer, whereas duck egg is greener, and that's Svenska blue. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is paint this entire table in a coat of duck egg blue, and then I'm going to highlight, go over and brush on, dry brush some highlights with Paris Gray. Um, I've got here the Waverly Inspirations uh, chalk paint brush, and I got it because I really want Annie Sloan's oval brush, but I just don't want to spend that much money. This is about half the cost. And it works pretty well if you want to see brush marks in your paintwork. Um, 
I've got a big one and then I've got this smaller one as well. They're both Waverly. And then if you want a smoother finish, the I would these are pretty brushes. This is a two and a half inch and this is a two inch. And these are some of my favorite. P purdy brushes are outstanding. They're a little more expensive than the cheap brushes, but they give a really nice finish. And I think I'm planning on using these for the legs because I want a very smooth look. So we're gonna get started with that. Can I paint? Uh, maybe. Let's just do a little bit. Um, normally, when I if I painted a chair or something, I would turn the thing upside down. I just don't want to turn this table upside down. So big. It's too big and heavy. So I'm just gonna paint it from the legs up. That looks fun. And just make a little bit, and I want to. I'm just gonna cover the whole thing in a solid coat and um, wait. Like so, just brush it on. This paint has very good coverage. I don't think it's gonna take more than a coat, um, like. especially since I'm going to go back and <coughs> brush in some gray highlights. Oval brush is really, really great for getting into all of these carved areas and just making sure the paint gets in there nice into the rosette and into these um, channels. I just want to show you the difference in how it's going to look. This is the oval Waverly chalk paint brush and you can see I'm brushing it on and I'm just going to paint in every which direction. Um, and you can see that you get a lot of texture. Same thing with my two inch purdy brush. Painting in all directions. It's a little bit smoother. There's not as much chunk to it. Um, so it's just gonna be, I guess the word would be more refined. 